I don't know if you, if you heard Pastor Randy say this, but that third song that we sang, he wrote that song. He wrote that song of worship. And I was talking with my son about this uh, yesterday, how the power of these Christmas songs that we sing during Christmas time. Now, one of his friends came to our Friday night Christmas Eve service, and he was just commenting on how powerful Christmas songs are. And, and what makes Christmas songs, I think, so powerful, and what makes the Christmas story so powerful is when you have something to write about that is powerful, right? Isn't, aren't the best stories the ones that are, evolve around a powerful theme? And, you know, we have songs that are written about romantic love and a lot of songs that are written just about our needs. But the power of the Christmas songs are they revolve around the declaration of who God is and what happened on that night that we celebrate and how he came into the earth. And that's what makes them really powerful. And so it's this. It's what John told us in John 1.3. He says to us, he says, this is what happened on that night. In the beginning was the Word, the Word of God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the very beginning with God, and through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. And then John goes on to say, and in him was life, and that life, that life was the light of all mankind, of all mankind. There are no, but nobody's left out of that one. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not, it will not, it cannot overcome his indestructible life. So when you're singing about that, that is powerful. And I think that's why the Christmas story and the Christmas songs are, are so powerful, because we're singing about this light, that when we receive it into our lives, when we allow it to penetrate our soul, it changes everything. For the better. It is the only thing, and he is the only one that can change a life. He is the only one that can free us from the power of sin. He is the only one that can break from us the grip of addiction of our lives. He is the only one. His light is the only thing that can heal a wounded heart. And he alone is the only one who can transform a life and give brand new life. And these stories that we're going to hear right now, these testify to this light coming into somebody's life.
God is doing amazing things in the lives of our youth. Let's come on inside and let's hear more about it. Let's go. Recently, I was feeling also really stressed about school and I had a lot of activities like work. One day I was feeling really bombarded by all those expectations and all that stress. And I was really feeling alone that day about how God wasn't there for me in my struggles. But that day, God really cleared up all the things that I was really stressed about. And He made a, a weight lift off my shoulders. And that reminded me how God is always there for me and how He's never left me in my struggles and how He's always active in our lives. A challenge I had this year was school. Like I, I overscheduled myself for this year and so like I really am bad at time management. I was very busy and I, there was like some services where I couldn't come because I was behind in my homework. I really like serving at church but that is also a very big time commitment. I prayed about it a lot and like how committed I should be to helping in the different areas of church like worship and like leadership and like even helping in Grace Kids. So I think God showed me that it's okay to say no to things sometimes. That's how He helped me grow is being able to say no and being able to know when I can and when I can't um, take on more responsibilities. Uh, so this past year, I felt really alone and confused with like what I was supposed to be doing because I didn't really have anything going on besides my little gelato work and school. And then we weren't meeting up in our G2s as much. And I was praying to God and I felt like he was really telling me to reach out to my G2 again. We started up our G2 again and that like really, really helped me. I didn't realize a lot of the struggles that I was going through was stuff that like my friends were also going through. I kind of felt like I was going to be a burden telling them about things that I was going through. They were really helpful and yeah, they were able to like give me like godly advice and not just like what I wanted to hear. Like they were like able to help me and like give me steps and like how to get closer to God. I've always been kind of shy and really introverted. This past year, I really pray to God and kind of make me more outgoing and be more friendly because it's been kind of hard to make a lot of friends. This year I felt like he put me in a lot of situations to practice that. He put me into a lot of groups that are really quiet and awkward. He's helped me to lead conversations and include more people into the conversations when we talk about our projects. And it's been hard, but slowly I've been getting better and better. The beginning of the year, I kind of took on a lot because I don't know why I thought I was going to go to like Harvard or something, even though I know I'm not going to. But I think my parents were like, you don't have to do all this extra stuff. Like it's kind of pointless because you should just enjoy your time. I started to realize like I, I should prioritize hanging out with my friends more and having fun because I, I really wouldn't do any of that stuff. I started to realize in the new school year, like. I should be prioritizing God and what He wants me to do for Him, so... Beginning of the year, someone asked me to lead a Bible study at campus, and then I said yes. I was nervous because I was doing it alone, and I didn't know anyone who was going to do it with me, but I think God showed me that He would help me during this time. I kind of lost importance to going to Friday night services, but then I just prayed to God and just say, like, should I be really skipping it out, or should I keep going? It doesn't matter how many people are there, or just... Just have a good time there, and sooner or later, I, I heard from God saying that you should go back and have a, and have a fun time. The way I reconnected and coming back to Friday services is just trying to help out more. So serving on worship team, uh, doing games, helping with clean up, and just staying around after just talking to people. And so this is my last year of high school. So our school has this personal transition plan, which talks about what we will be doing in the future after we graduate in high school. And when I was talking about myself to the interviewers, they asked me specifically about my religion and what I do because they saw how much involvement I was in it, like worship, um, leader. And so I was able to share my faith and how I was able to open up because of church. Awesome. Well, we're so thankful for what God has been doing in the lives of our youth this year. And we're even more excited going ahead into 2022, knowing that God will be doing even greater things in this generation. We are committed to reaching more youth and making disciples and raising up more leaders that would impact the world. At the age of 14, I started dabbling in a little bit of marijuana, alcohol. As the addictions 
progressed uh, to different and harder uh, drugs. Methamphetamine, I guess, would be the the most damaging of them all. And so, um, going on that path of drug addiction came crime to support my drug addictions. And with that crime, I eventually again caught. I did get um, convicted for multiple charges um, from unauthorized entry to motor vehicles, to drug paraphernalia, drug promotion, and eventually the bigger sentence of a Class A armed conviction. And so that, that Class A conviction uh, led to many uh, prison uh, stays. Altogether, it was a 12-year stay. On the, on the third, my third stay there, I was violated and picked up new charges. And they sentenced me to that seven-year stay, right. in which, you know, I did everything that I needed to do to, to get out. Did multiple level three drug treatment programs, which is the highest level of drug treatment program that you can uh, come into. And I did that for three times. And obviously, after the first time, I didn't lose my, I learned my lesson. But inside, there was no lasting change. And so my, my behaviors were the same. And upon getting up, completing the level three drug treatment for the third time, my best thinking says, we're going to get graduate on Friday. So let's look for the drugs today so we can celebrate on that Friday. My thinking patterns became the same old patterns of, of criminal activity and behavior. While living in sin, I was walking from my room to, to get child. You have to walk out of your living area down to the mess hall or child hall. And in that process, I heard God say, Lenny, you got to get your lives together. And in that instant, I knew that was the voice of God. From there, it was an awesome journey. I made discipled uh, by, like I said, men that were incarcerated for many, many years, um, different and various type of sentences and crimes. And the process began there. Yeah, totally know the experience and the, the hurt or stresses or anxieties or even the bondage of um, addiction totally um, relate to going through the, those those types of feelings being stuck in situations that sometimes we feel helpless in seek refugee God because he's the only one that could help you take yourself out of that hurts hang-ups and addictions and and move forward to a life uh, with purpose and uh, joy. We have started a group, Celebrate Recovery. The Celebrate Recovery um, is a program that uh, helps us to uh, look at the truth of what it is. It's a spiritual program. Jesus Christ is the higher power. And so based off of that, uh, this program will help you to see ultimately who is in control and what is your role as far as taking ownership of uh, your hurts, hangups, and addictions and giving them necessary tools to, to process through this and, and building you a solid support team in order to help you walk through uh, these hurts, hang-ups, and addictions. So, yeah, lives are changed. Lives are being worked on through this program. Uh, we're excited uh, to offer and extend the welcome for you to come and check it out and just try to take part in well, celebrate recovery. I just uh, am grateful and thankful to be able to use be used by God in this way. Like I said, um, there's never a, a moment with, where I will just shy away from what God has done for me. And so any opportunity I have to give back and hopefully make an impact for Christ, sucks I would do that on a drop of a dime. So I just thank you for my time um, and be, be able to have listening ears. I'm really grateful that I got to meet you and God brought you into my life and our grace grew. I was actually at work just doing my regular day-to-day -day thing and I had a patient and she was um, asking me like if I was Christian and if I was going to church and I told her I am a Christian but 
I'm not really going to church at the moment. I've been trying to find a one. So she invited me and then that next week I came, I brought my husband and my mom and it was awesome. Do you feel like something spoke to you? Cause you got baptized like yeah. a couple weeks ago. So I got baptized and that's something speak to you in that or like what kind of? I just felt like it was all meant to be like God just planned out everything for me. And I had no idea that this was gonna happen. I think like the first or second time I came to church, um, I met Pastor Chris and she was telling me, oh, we gotta get you plugged into a group. And right after that, she introduced me to you and you invited me to come to group. I was definitely nervous, but I felt like, why not? Like I never had been a part of church like that or had joined any groups or I never even went to Sunday school as a kid. I just stayed with my mom. So I just felt like, I don't know. Normally, I want to do something like that, and maybe the Holy Spirit just kind of pushed me. <laughs> so I, I, it, I think it kind of helped that we we met at Macaroni Girl. <laughs> and you were all very like open and very um, so kind and friendly. I felt like really comfortable, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna keep going every week. <laughs> I'm so grateful to also have been part of your baptism and Teresa's baptism process. It was it was a big day. I was like. Okay, I got through, I got through one without crying and now I have to go <laughs> through another one. And, oh yeah, I teared up like before I went under, but once I came out, I was just happy and I was just wet everywhere. <laughs> I know, it was, it was an awesome day. There's so many people um, at church and so many people um, who want to get plugged in and join groups and that's awesome that uh, our group is like there as an example of like how amazing it is to just Take that little step, like you might feel a little nervous, like excited nervous, <laughs> but like it's just awesome to be plugged into a group and then to see it grow and more and more people like come to know Jesus and just know that there's support and so many people who are here to like watch you and help you with this like walk and journey mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's just good news, yeah. <laughs>been a, such an amazing year for us um, looking back on it there's so much grace that I see um, particularly in, in our lives and so much gratitude really that I that I have for all that God has done when we did the prayer and fasting um, there's a booklet and then I wrote down what what's my prayer so in different areas and um, it was breakthrough it was breakthrough for my relationship with my son and then so after the prayer and fasting, it's like after a week or two weeks after something happened, there's an incident happened and it's just like, what is this? Like, oh my goodness, God, I don't know. I don't know how to, how to solve it. And it was really heartbroken and especially as a mom, you know, seeing your, your, your son, you know, your daughter or whatever challenges they're going through, you feel the pain, but there's nothing that I can do by the time. So I just like, okay, God, that was the time that I just keep seeking and seeking and seeking. Really, I'm just like, but during that, those moments that I kept seeking God, God just revealed himself to me. God works, you know, in a perfect time, in his ways. And with that, I just really learned to seek more. I, he, he, now, when I look back, he's becoming my counselor. Because before, you know, for us, when we have challenges, we can tend to, you know, um, ask help from people around us. But we forgot to, you know, go directly to God. It, at all times, it might be small or big. God is really, you know, He's just there waiting. Listening to you, uh, I thought, you know, you, you were you were about obeying, you know, God. And, and when I pray about it and ask what, what really happened, uh, God really led me to let go. Uh, le the word for me is, le is letting go of a lot of things. Control is <laughs> a big one. Letting go of fear and anxiety, right? Uh, so many things that, uh, that, you know, the process of letting go allows you to release, you know, and then, and that's, I think, what happened really over the past couple of years, but particularly this year, right? And letting go of those things allowed you to hold on to and listen to, you know, the, the, the more important things, which is usually that of God. I, I, I began to hear uh, his voice more clearly. One of them was saying, go step in to church a little bit more. So 
you know, I did so, and, and it started with um, helping at, at the parking, you know, and then doing that. And then God also said, no, step, step in even more. And so uh, he led me to go and, and, uh, and, and step into Empowered, you know, and, and those, and that has really challenged me, I must say. <laughs> it challenges me and God speaking to me and, and challenging me to, to press in, you know, and, and uh, let go of all the other stuff and hold on to is Him. We want to encourage um, you and the whole congregation, you know, to, to uh, step in to the church, particularly the hard prayer um, services. Those are, those are just phenomenal. It has just dramatically opened up my heart um, beyond my own needs to the community and the world around us. I think that's what one thing that Empowered uh, Prayer does, and, and it's such a powerful thing. So I encourage all of you to try it out and, 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 uh, and see how it might um, empower your life as well. So I was raised um, in a Christian um, home. You know, my mom always took us to church. So my father um, went to uh, prison when I was around two, and so he was never in our life. But, um, and you know, I had always had like a, like a, you know, uh, what's the word? I always felt some type of way about that. And um, so we didn't have a, he used to always call, we didn't have a good relationship. I just started, uh, you know, hanging out with the wrong crowd and getting in trouble with the law. Um, you know, just having a temper, wanting to fight all the time. Uh, you know, using and like selling drugs, just not even thinking about God at the time. I didn't know at the time, but it, I knew, but I knew something wasn't right. And uh, you know, I was going through a lot of things at the time. I, it all started to pile up on me, and I started to get like, I wouldn't say anxiety, but I was, I was starting to feel like I was, you know, I needed something, and and like everything that you, the people, everyone would say, the world will make you happy. I was doing all those things, and I was just was not happy. So I felt like I was just like carrying so many burdens and uh, in the midst of it, I wasn't, look, I didn't know I, what I was looking for, but you know, he helped me kind of find it. He just asked me, and I didn't know if I was ready for it or not, but he kind of asked me the question, uh, Logan, like, do you want to give your life back to God? And you know, that's when I just said, you know what, like, like yeah, I do. And uh, so he, he said a prayer with me and you know, I gave my life back to God. Since then, it's just been like a life, life changing cycle that's just been going on. Just getting, learn more about God and just realize how like blessed I am to, you know, how much he loves me and how much, you know, I can't earn his forgiveness, but he's still giving it to me. And I just realized how loved I am. So I always just have a, like a heart for others. You know, I wanna, you know, my story might be able to affect someone else. It might be able to uh, help them with something they're going through. So I always wanna share my stories with others. And uh, just, I wanna bring my brothers and, you know, anyone really who needs it, uh, to God and I brought a couple of my um, local local friends from out here in Hawaii and you know one of my boys Tiger he uh, ended up uh, being saved and giving his life to God and uh, he ended up getting baptized with me and my wife and you know it was a big moment for me real emotional that uh, you know that I could actually do that and you know bring him, someone else to God being able to um, have that fellowship with the um, small groups is one of my teammates Pastor Greg it's that, that's been the main thing that has been helping me on this journey. The two biggest people in my life, my son Kobe and my wife Teresa. Um, you know, me and Teresa have been together for I think seven plus years now. And uh, so our relationship, when we weren't with God, you know, it was kind of up and down. You know, we always knew, like I always knew she was the one for me, but you know, it just like, see, I couldn't figure it out. You know, we always, stuff was always going wrong. And you know, since we, um, been uh, growing in, in this relationship with God together. It's just been night and day, you know, I've never been happier. It's like me and Teresa have started a whole new relationship, you know, and it's made us realize like what a, like a real family that follows God should be like. And you know, we've learned a lot since, since we got married. So we, uh, we recently got married as well as getting baptized together. It makes me emotional because I know that now I can show my son what a real relationship people who honor God and live for God can look like and you know that's just one of my biggest things is being a good example to my son I'll tell you that God has changed my life and from someone that has lived what I lived man I wish I knew this earlier it might it may feel like you're lost 
But you know, that may be just God trying to draw you closer to him. And you know, we all have a plan. God has a plan for us. And it's, it's for good. Tell him that you need help. You know, I can't do this life on my own. And I need you. And just watch how he works in your life. <laughs> I'm here to study theater for young audiences. No way. We're getting our masters in theater for young audiences. What? Yes. yes. So what? Uh, what brought you here? Why? Why? Why are you studying this? Why are you here? Oh my God. This is a good question. I love theater, obviously, theater for young audiences, but I also love working with children and I love educating children and I think a really awesome, fun way to educate children is through theater. And that's also a reason that I joined in the children's ministry, Grace Kids. I think plugging in is really a good a good thing to build community. <laughs> we actually, we did the growth track together. Um, our first, like our right first month here. <laughs> we got here in August mm -hmm. and we're like, okay, we gotta find ways to plug in. Mm -hmm. um, I actually didn't know about Grace. I, I knew that I wanted to get plugged in with a church, um, but through Jill, she yes. actually told me more yes. about Grace. I, my first church that I went to by myself, I found it myself in undergrad, was an Every Nation church, and then after undergrad, I moved to New York, found an Every Nation church there, and then when I knew I was moving to Hawaii, I was like, hmm, I wonder if there's an Every Nation church here, and there was! Yeah. And so that's been a really awesome way to get plugged in and kind of already know the vibe of the church, and Carice yeah. wanted to come with me, which okay. was very fun. What do you enjoy about serving? Um. I don't know, I think that's the best way to plug into a community, um, to get to know other people and just to share a similar vision. Uh, I actually, I grew up in a military family, so I've moved every two to three years of my life. Uh, and so I was constantly on the move, but the biggest things to me were friends, or were my family, my immediate family, and then plugging in with the church. And through plugging in with church, we were able to meet other people, I was able to make more friends, um, and just get connected. So I've been serving wherever I've lived, and when we got here, I was like, okay, I need to plug in, I need to start serving. Um, yeah. Just, yeah. I, yeah, I, I have a serving. super bad habit of, when I go to a new church, not meeting anyone, oh. unless I get plugged in with yeah. some sort of serve team, and so that's been really great, just right off the bat, getting to serve and work with kids, because we love kids. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you. For me personally, when they asked me to like start this small group, like I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like I told Aiden, like I don't know what to do. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Even though I don't still know what I'm doing, it's like we're doing it together and we're finding our own peace in the group. And we're all in this together in life. And it's like connections or relationships that we'll have for a lifetime that I've before. Even though I grew up in the church like all my life, like recently, I felt like I was kind of straying away and I was kind of like not going as often. I like like the closeness that we have here. <laughs> you know, like we all like yeah. just came together like out of like meeting each other. Mm -hmm. I knew Margaret first from, from school. So you were out in California at the time. I had told you I was going to London. I went to London. Pandemic happens out there and it was out of 19 of us students that went, only four of us stayed behind, which was me, Priscilla, and our other two friends. I think it was your birthday. Day and you guys are FaceTiming yeah. and I recognize your voice. I just remember coming and saying, is that Margaret? She's like, yes, how do you know Margaret? And so the connection of how we all just got to know each other together and it's definitely not coincidence. Now I love that we can grow together through this friendship and flourish and I'm excited to see what comes forth as well. Now 2020 was I think a hard year for everyone, but especially hard with family stuff that went on in my life. Going into 2021, I was like, okay, God, like I really want to like deepen my like relationship with God. I feel like God spoke to me. You guys are gonna laugh because <laughs> God speaks to me in like pictures a lot of times, but they're really like dumb pictures because that's what I understand. I felt like he said like, okay, Aiden, you're a cup of water and I'm a microwave. And I was like, okay. And he was like, you're lukewarm. But if you remain in me, I can like turn you into something that's gonna be so impactful and so good. 
And so I thought about it, I was like, yeah, actually, <laughs> like all the best things need hot water, like coffee, <laughs> like instant mac and cheese, <laughs> and like ramen. So I was like, okay, God, like I want to have macaroni and cheese faith. And so that's been like my goal of 2021. Like I want to not be lukewarm. I want to be hot and fiery for him. And I feel like that has been so exciting to see like when you give your all to God and you say, okay, boil me up or whatever, like he really shows up. It's uh, really great you said about, uh, you know, 2020 yeah, is hard for everyone, including myself. And um, when our church bought this property, it presented the opportunity to reconnect again. And I got a chance to help out and helping fix up this place and getting more opportunities to be more involved with, you know, just behind the scenes is really uh, just good with my faith. It really helps me feel more connected with the church. This year was like truly the time where I, I felt like a lot of peace in me. Like I didn't feel really rushed. I felt the most stable this year. And I think it's really because of the community and the church that brought everything together and just the relationship with God. I think it's a good time now to uh, start connecting again, especially with the fact that we're so close to uh, UH. When we used to gather around, it used to be about like us like mending together and trying to fill that foundation. Now it's coming to a point where we're like, oh, we're good to expand out and reach more people. This year has been really interesting. For years, I've been praying about having a lot more college age and young people in the church. But yeah, this year has been really interesting because I, you know, I thought I'd be going to Japan in March, but you know, still here in <laughs> almost December. Um, but it's really been a blessing because I think I've seen so many prayers that I've been having for you know past couple of years be fulfilled just in this year of wanting to see young people in the church. And if I had gone to the Japan, I don't think I would have seen you know this group pop up and and all these new you know college students coming through and yeah everyone growing in their faith, but also like inviting their friends. You know I was always trying to invite people and bring people. Now now that we have like a community of young people that are really on fire for God. I'm really chasing after him. I mean, Margaret and Tiffany, you guys brought, I mean, I don't know how many people. In hindsight, you know, I'm so glad that I, I didn't go to Japan in March because I would have missed the fulfillment of all of those prayers that I had before. And hopefully, you know, I'll be able to go to Japan soon. <laughs> but I think it's um, it's great to, to see God's promises being fulfilled, even with this property and just seeing the life that's on the property now. 2021 was great, but I mean, 2022 seems like it's going to be an awesome year as well, so. We're a father in couple. Yeah, otherwise known as a Polynesian couple. We are Polynesian. Very channels. Do you look forward to them? I do. I do look forward to them. They teach me a lot, especially a uh, uh, different way of thinking, different uh, way to show love. In fact, the, the uh, title of the thing that we're doing now is the love and respect. And you know, I, I didn't realize, I guess subconsciously I understood how much respect meant for me and how much that fueled my love for my wife but i'm just hearing uh someone put it in words and to actually teach that concept wow it just just really struck at me how much i i do value my wife's respect and validation and how much that does drive me to love you it's helped me to understand him better and like the crazy stuff he does they're not as crazy as i think um, there is actually some logic and sense behind it. It's just, I have to learn to reframe my mind so that I can respect him more so that he can love me more. What the Vera Tuttles have helped us to do is to um, not stay at the office and to stay mad at each other, but to choose past it and to know and give each other the benefit of the doubt. For the Vera Tuttle, we wouldn't really um, um, recognize it as quickly I think prior to this, like we said, um, we could stay mad at each other for a really long time. It's also connected us to other couples. Um, being, we're fairly new here at Grace Bible uh, Church Honolulu, and um, we don't know a whole bunch of couples, but through doing the videos and being on the marriage team, we actually, we check in people when they come. And so we get to put names with faces yeah. and uh, we get to talk stories. We've been a whole bunch of really cool people. I knew, but I didn't know how much respect, how important it was uh, to, for my, to energize me in my marriage so that I can then energize my wife um, in our marriage. And I think the more we relate to that, love and respect, the more we learn about ourselves first, because you know we really gotta 
uh, feed ourselves so that our families can be strong. Sometimes people think that they've been married for so long that they don't really need a cook. People say that they wish that they had learned these things earlier in their marriage so that they probably wouldn't have gone through all the different things that they went through. No matter where you are in your journey of um, marriage or engagement or whatever, these huddles really help you to really understand your other half and to be able to be the person that God intended you to be. I left my faith back in high school. I was about 17 years old and I moved to Hawaii because it was something that I felt like I was in a rut, stuck in my ways. So I was partying all the time. I was drinking a lot. I was taking a lot of drugs, a lot of psychedelics. I was spending a lot of my money on the music industry and going to concerts and spending the money on drugs and partying a lot and just, you know, whether it was just molly or acid or just taking those trips. And it seemed like the right thing to do um, because I felt like the black sheep of my family. So it was mainly just discovering what I thought was right for me. There was a moment where my little brother called me for my birthday just this past year and he told me about a really kind of daunting dream about myself and he had had it a year before and it was just basically me going down the popular path and I felt conviction from the Holy Spirit. At first I was pretty anxious. I called my little brother as fast as I could because I, you know, I just wanted to talk to him about some things and where my next step would be. And he basically just kind of was listening to me and I started throwing all of the things off of my desk. I had drugs all over my desk. I had um, paraphernalia all over my desk. I had a beer sitting there. I ended up dumping down the sink and I had artwork dedicated to all the wrong things. It was difficult, but it was something that I had to do. It was just renouncing and repenting for those things. Once I was convicted by the Holy Spirit and once I had released all of those things that I put in the trash and repented for, I just understood what it meant to hear the Word of God and know that it was the truth. And so it just led me to see how much I was living a life down the tunnel vision and in fog. I just, my head was foggy, my eyes were foggy, I just wasn't really going in a direction that I had thought was the right direction. This I registered for the 9 a.m. Mass, and uh, once I first walked in, the first five minutes, Liko came and said hello to me. So it was pretty awesome that he was able to reach out to me, and then he invited me to small groups after Mass was over. I've always had this feeling in my heart that I've needed to serve, and give back to my community. And this just felt like the perfect way to be able to come help clean the church and, you know, be a part of something much bigger than myself and be involved. It's part of being part of the team. Nobody really understands the mercy of God. And he just forgives us through all of these things and all we have to do is just say, I'm sorry, can you please forgive me, Lord? And he shows his mercy and his grace, and he just gives you the biggest, warmest hug and lets you know that he loves you. He sent his son here for us, and it's just so amazing that having that faith is being able to just know that God is with you. Through the times that I've had those drugs, he was still watching me. He was still hoping for me to turn away from sin and towards the light.
things that God has done in our midst, isn't it? I mean, because church is more than just this service and coming and being a part of an event. Church is a community of people whose lives are being transformed by the power of God, who receive light and who God is transforming. That's really what church is. It's the gathering of those people who are get together. Now we're going together on mission. And it's, it's people who have confidence that not only did God come this first time, and this is what we celebrate at Christmas. We celebrate the birth, the arrival of Jesus Christ in the flesh, God himself in the earth. But this, this season of Advent is also this season where we're reminded that we, we live between two seasons. We live between the first coming of Christ, where Christ came as a man and then grew up and became this man who would die on a cross in our place, pay the price for our sins, and then would be resurrected. And we live between that time and also this next time when God will come again. He says, I'm coming again. And he's coming different. He's not going to come as a baby. He's going to come as the fully actualized King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In fact, on his his leg is going to be written that name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It says, his eyes will be a flaming fire. Out of his mouth will come a two-edged sword. He's already, his kingdom has already been inaugurated. But when he comes back, he will be coming back now to take his final place of rule over the earth. And in that time, the kingdoms of our world, they will become the kingdom of God, of the Lord, and of his Christ. And we look forward now, but right now we live between these two seasons. And in between these two seasons, we are supposed to be faithful. Faithful and now fulfilling our mission. Because becoming a follower of Christ and inviting him into our lives, God also reciprocates by inviting us now into his family, his ohana, and into his mission of going into all the world and preaching the gospel. And being, as Jesus said, being salt and being light in this world that we live in. So Jesus looks at us and he says, now I want you to go and be the light of the world. And, and do and live your life in such a way that communicates the goodness of God. That somehow people would make a connection between the works that you do and the good news that's coming out of your life. And the Heavenly Father who sent you and sent His Spirit to empower you to do those good works. And somehow people would look up and they would see not, not us, but they would see the glory of our God and the good news in our lives would communicate the good news about our God. Hey, thank you for watching the Grace Honolulu YouTube channel. Hit that like button and if you haven't already, please subscribe. You'll receive weekly content like sermons and worship music. Great stuff. Also, you can follow us on social media and if you'd like to give, go to gracehonolulu.org. Have a great week. Look forward to seeing you next week right here online. God bless you.